QuickBooks Online 2024 statement form. Get ready and some trail mix because we're hiking on QuickBooks Online, our audit trail to success. Here we are online in our browser searching for QuickBooks Online test drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com in the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, selecting the United States version of the software and verifying that we're not a robot. Opening our major financial statement reports like we do every time, reports on the left hand side. And then in our favorites, we're gonna be right clicking on the balance sheet so I can open it in a new tab. We're gonna right click on the profit and loss, same thing, open link in new tab. Up top, looking at the middle tab now, closing the hamburger on the left, there's our balance sheet report. Tabbing to the right, closing the hamburger on the left, there's our profit and loss or income statement report. Back to the first tab, that's the setup process that we do First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP. You see what we did with like with the letters? And... This CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either. Anyone can and should have at least one, possibly multiple CPA thinking caps. Why? Because based on our scientific survey of five people, all of whom directly profit from the sale of these CPA thinking caps, wearing this CPA thinking cap without a doubt, according to the survey, increases accounting productivity tenfold. Yeah, at least. Yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head, allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the Matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey is saying. So get one because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Every time we're going to do the data input in the first tab, look at the results of that data input to the tabs to the right. Selecting the drop down, we've been looking at the cycles, customer cycle, vendor cycle. We jumped over here to the other area, which isn't actually a cycle, but these are the forms that don't fit neatly into the other cycles and therefore are being placed over here by uh, QuickBooks. So now we want to look at the statement form, which is in this other section. So the statement form is a little bit different than what we've seen with other forms because most other forms like the ones in the cycles and in this other section, invoices, uh, receive payment, expense form, check form, and so on, those usually enter transactions into the financial statements. These are the area that we typically go for normal data input processes. Same with the, the bank deposit, the transfer form, those enter uh, transactions. The statement doesn't actually enter a transaction, however, but I think they housed it here because uh, the idea most likely would be that if you're on an accrual system, you're gonna be wanting to send out payments to try to collect on the accounts receivable. Therefore, this process is gonna happen enough that you would want it here in the other forms. So note that the statement form would only be used generally, uh, usually, if you're on a accrual type system, because in the accrual type system, that's when we send out the invoice and we have to track the accounts receivable, hopefully get paid on it and then record the received payment. That time period when the invoice is out and we're looking to get paid is when we might be sending out payments uh, or statements and reminders to try to, to try to collect on that money. So just to get an idea of that, let's go to the sales tab on the left-hand side, which is kind of like the customer center. Let's go into the customers up top. And, and if I close up the hamburger, let's close up the hamburger. 
we can see that some of the customers might be owing us money. So we might go up top and search on our filters and say, I wanna look for the open invoices and credits. So if I go into that, now we have this nice little link that shows that some of these uh, customers owe us money or from either one or possibly multiple invoices. Now, if I go into a particular customer, if I go into this customer and I'm saying, hey, look, I need to collect on a particular uh, invoice. So I might say, okay, this one's overdue. If I hit the drop down here, we could send uh, we could send a reminder, right? So we might give a reminder. Now, notice that that's going to be so we could try to like resend the, the invoice or uh, send a reminder. So here's our reminder looks like this, and we can populate it from an email. We can tip typically send it out in an email, uh, and so that's great. But if if I'm doing that for every customer, that can be somewhat tedious. You would think that we can automate this process because all of the outstanding invoices I would want to send out reminders for, possibly periodically, possibly every month or so, right? So we can try to automate the process. Plus, some of these, like this customer, has two outstanding invoices. So the question, the, the thing there would be, well, I would like to send out some kind of form possibly that will give them the information about both of those that are outstanding instead of sending out two emails to try to collect on. I want to send out one statement generally that has both of them included, trying to hopefully get the full payment for everything they, they owe me for the two invoices, right? So if I go back to the to the customers over here, uh, we, we one way we can think about doing that is you might say, okay, I'm gonna go to all of my uh, open invoices. So here's all the customers that have the open amounts and we could select them. So I might populate the all of them this way. And if I have a nice clean setup, everything's set up properly, then all of them would be needing a reminder that have these open invoices. And then possibly I can use my batch action here and then say, I wanna create statements. So then if I open that, then it's gonna to go to my batch action into my uh, statement area. And now we're within our statements and all, all of these customers have been, have been uh, pulled in to create a statement with. Now, the other way we could do that, of course, if I close this back out, is I'm gonna say, do you wanna leave? I'm gonna say, yes, it would, it's even easier than that. We don't have to do the batch action anymore. I don't have to filter over here or do the batch action. I could just simply go to the, to the uh, hamburger, go to the plus button, and I can go to my statements here instead. And so if I go to my statements here, then again, we get to the same window. So let's analyze the, the different statements. We've got the three types up top. We've got the balance forward, open items, uh, transaction statement. Normally you'd probably be doing the balance forward because the statements you would think would be used most likely on an accrual based system to try to collect on the accounts receivable. So the balance forward, I, I believe the name is, is trying to tell you that when you look at the date range down here, the beginning date, any invoices that were entered prior to the beginning date will be entered as a balance forward. It's not going to give the detail, in other words, of the invoice. And then everything that's within this range should then be populated, uh, giving you a little bit more detail about the invoice that it's referring to. Uh, so that's the general idea. Now, the statement date, we'll keep it here at the 123023 in our practice mode, which is usually going to be, of course, the current day that you're running the statements. And then on the customer balance status, we could look at all of our customers and uh, and apply. You have to apply every time or else it doesn't do it. So, But all of our customers might not have uh, open amounts. So normally you would go to the open items, right? And apply them out because that's who you wanna send the statements to. However, possibly you just wanna send out statements to the overdue balances. In other words, when you look at an invoice, we issue the invoice and then it's due in a certain time frame. So, so maybe you wanna send out payments only to those that have not yet sent you payment and it's overdue now. So if you, had, if you gave them 30 days to pay you and it's past 30 days, 
maybe you just send the, the statements out for them. So that could quite be the case, quite possibly. So now we're gonna say the date range, I'm gonna start at 11.30 and go to the current date, typically. You're gonna to go to the current date, which we're gonna imagine here is 12.30, uh, uh, 23. Down below, if there were customers that don't have an email, then they would be over here. You can't send them a statement by email if they don't have an email, right? You'd have to actually uh, print out the statements, which you might be able to do and mail it. But clearly you would like, to, if you're sending out invoices, to have the email address so you could send it out by email. So these are the statements available. We have the 17. You can see we have the recipient's name. We've got their email address and we've got the balance outstanding down below. We can cancel, we can print preview, we can save, we can save and send. That's what we're gonna do when we're done with the whole thing or save and close. And I wanna say print preview. Let's check them out. So then we have our statements that have been created. So we have our name up top. We have uh, the, the statement format. And then here you can see this is the balance forward. So this is the amount that was due to us prior to the date that we started, that we, that we put on, that we started, the, the starting point date. And then this is the current activity that has happened between the date that we're looking at, which is basically December. So this is the de December activity and invoice a, a payment and uh, a payment. So you have the running balance on the right hand side, which gives them a little bit of detail of the activity that is happening. And it gives us the balance still due 239. It also gives this little uh, report down below for the for the outstanding balance that breaks it out by current due one to 30 days past due. So it gives them this past due amount uh, here to, to once again, and it also gives a nice little bottom line in the settings, I think you can turn this off if you don't want this bit down below, but I don't see why you wouldn't want it. It's pretty, it's pretty useful because it gives the kind of like the bottom line uh, down below and a little bit more information of saying, hey, look, it's past due. If we go through it, it gives a statement. Here's the next one that, that we just go to all of them. Here's the balance forward, no activity in the current time period, and it's been past due. And then we have the next one. Here's the balance forward, the payment happened and then another invoice happened. And so this one actually got paid off. Notice it's showing the detail. There's the, there's the balance, it was paid off. And then here's the new invoice. It's showing the activity that happened in the current, uh, in the current time frame. And there's the, the balance, here's the next one, just has a balance forward uh, of one to 30 days past due, 31 to 60 days past due, and so on. So that's probably the default one that most people would use. And hopefully we can email that out and make our, our follow-up process on the accounts receivable cycle easier. Let's look at the other two options though. You've got the open items. So these are open items for the last 365 days. So now open items are gonna be, are gonna, and let's apply it, are gonna be, you would think, uh, the invoices, right? That haven't been paid, that are open. So let's check that out. Let's uh, print preview that one. And we then have, now it's showing uh, the detail of the invoice for the last uh, 365 days. So there we have that. And so here's uh, the invoice of the open item and open item. Here's the invoice. It gives you the detail of the invoice. This one has two of them, right? So now we have the two items here and it still gives you the amount due uh, down below because this was the amount open amount is 81 and four and it gives you the amount due down below so a little bit uh, a little bit different of the statement so but it might be a little bit uh, less information so if you have really long statements possibly that might be useful but it's only going you know it's 365 days back and then the last one transaction statement so this will give you the transactions that have happened and possibly you might have customers that want the transaction statement maybe even if it wasn't an invoice even if it was a cash based system maybe and you know you have your transaction statement that a particular customer may want for example let's preview that one and so we can see here we've got uh the transaction here's uh, the invoice uh total amount and then it gives you the total that received and notice we're not looking here at the amount at past due. It doesn't give you that past due amount right down below, 
because it's just looking at the activity that has happened. It's not trying to report necessarily on the outstanding balance per se, like is normally the case for statements here. Now we're just showing the activity that has happened. So here's the invoice, the amount received total. And then here's another invoice for this one. This one we invoiced and let's see if we have one. Let's, let's increase the range on this one just to see more activity. Let's go from 01023 to 1230, apply it. And now we'll see more range on this one. So now if they wanted the transactions for the year, we had an invoice, we had an invoice, we had a credit uh, memo, we had an invoice, total amount uh, and uh, total received. And then here we had uh, an invoice and an invoice. Uh, so that was the activity total amount. And then uh, total received gives you the amount and the received. And then we had here uh, invoice, you know, three invoice and then the amount received on those invoices. So it gives you kind of the detail. It's not giving you still the outstanding balance or the amount that's due over a certain time. But again, if someone wants the activity that has happened over a range, uh, then this is this would be a nice report for that idea. But again, usually you would think that the reports would mainly be used that you set up in an accrual system, possibly using the first balance forward report so that you can set up a system that you follow up on the invoices, being able to, to not just send out the invoice again as a reminder, but give a statement which will allow you to combine multiple invoices into one statement, hopefully allowing you to not bother your, your clients too much with too many emails and be able to pay you the full amount that's due rather than having two uh, invoices where they might catch one and then not get the other one or something like uh, like that and being able to then do this on a, on a systematic process to, to make it part of basically your accounting cycle a lot more uh, efficiently is the general idea.